Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souders, Slender Cat Outdoors, back with you again today. I'm here with a good friend, Zach Royce, from Blues Brothers Guide Service here on Lake Gaston, North Carolina. Uh, we've been out for the last couple days during uh, the first cold front of the fall. Dealing with some winds, some tough conditions, but yep. we was able to put some good fish in a boat. And as we're talking, I'm uh, going to share those pictures with you guys uh, so you guys got something to look at other than these two beautiful faces. <laughs> but... Uh, but anyway, wanted to sit down with Zach and ask some questions and kind of get your opinion on some things. I mean, if I could highly recommend somebody for you guys to book a trip with, ask questions about dragging, uh, Zach knows what he's doing. Um, you know, once again, Blues Brothers Guide Service, you've been doing that for... Uh, guide in full-time five years now. Five years, you know. Um, he's got a dirty boat. Uh, we're in my boat today, but he's got a dirty boat, which means... He knows how to catch fish, right? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to share, or I'm going to have him share with you guys uh, five tips that, you know, he thinks beginners make while they're dragging or starting to drag. Right. So, Zach, what are your five tips that you can give the viewers? Uh, so if they go out and they start dragging baits, dragging lakes, Gaston, Willer, any lake, period. Right. What are five mistakes that you see people make to help them keep from making those same mistakes? Oh, uh, right off the bat, the first thing that I personally notice uh, a lot of guys that are new and some that aren't new to drifting um, that I think makes a big difference for me for catching larger fish is a lot of people have the lines, you know, almost right under the boat or just 20 or 30 yards out. Um, personally, I, of course, everything's staggered, you know. Yeah. Um, when I put my spread out, but 90% of my big fish come off my farthest lines from the boat. Um, that's just, that's always been my experience uh, dragging. Um, and, and I learned long ago um, with with doing this type of fishing uh, that, you know, the farther you've got them out for the most part, the better. Um, yeah, I always have a couple closer. And like I said, I do stagger them, but those bigger fish a lot of times hit lines way off the back of the boat and that's I think it's a combination of presentation and then just um, you know the fact that maybe the fish know the boat is, is there even in deeper water you know sound and everything carries so absolutely but that's for whatever tip. reason uh, the bottom line is they do seem to prefer the farther lines for me most of the time um, and that's a mistake I see a lot of guys make with fish you know straight under the boat or you know not far off the bat I'm not to say you can't catch them doing that at times, but overall, um, at least run a couple lines way out. Other than that, um, you know, for me, when I started out dragging, um, I didn't use any planer boards, anything like that. Um, I just drove straight off the back of the boat with a few lines. And now that I've started using planer boards, I look back like, man, how did I go without them? Um, you know, it's just a huge difference covering more water. Um, you know, avoid entangles. Yeah. Um, you know, different presentation there. Again, you know, being out away from the boat, you know, they're spread the lines off the side of the boat. You're not, your boat's not traveling over those fish um, that the planter boards are reaching. Absolutely. You know, and straight line. For you guys that don't know what a planter board is, this is uh, this is an offshore planter board. Um, if you, you know, if you're looking for a good planter board, this is one. Uh, Zach also makes his own planter board. Uh, they're Zach Royce Edition planter boards. So at the end of the video, I will put links and stuff for uh, all Zach's information um, so you guys can go and check out all of his stuff. He also makes some dragon weights and things like that. But uh, those are two good tips. What, uh, you know, uh, basic stuff that I can think about, you know, are like bait and, right. you know, links of leaders. Rigging, uh, definitely. You know, that was, that, and that, that's a really big deal with um with dragging baits trolling drifting you know all of that stuff is, is having the correct setup with the rigs um you know slinky weights uh, any type of drift weights grab that um yeah here's, a, here's an old off an old rig there but yeah that's the basic idea of it. yeah this is you know just um, some sort of this way he's calling a slinky weight anything personally i found anything that flexes mm -hmm. um does best not hanging up. Um, is I think it's a little better presentation. Again, I, I think that's a big part of drifting is a smooth presentation. You know, not sitting there bouncing up and down at the bottom, looking crazy to the fish. 
um, obviously it's going to be better. Yeah. Um, and a and a weight like that um, that allows it to pull free off of rocks and stops, whatever debris you know structure you're going through. Um, it I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, you know, as far as the presentation, but also the fact that if you're constantly snagging, breaking off, your bait's not in the water. Yep. You, you can't that. catch them like that. You got to keep that bait um, in the water. So all the way from from the sinker to um, your leader length, um, you know, that's it all. It all really comes together um, when you're drift fishing. You know, when you're dragging, you want to have everything dialed in. Um, you know, you, your leader length. I know we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, one day the fish may be tight to the bottom, may be buried in mud. Um, we've all caught fish that had mud all over. Oh yeah. Um, so. You know, those days I've noticed a short leader, okay. you know, it'll pick fish up a lot of times for me, but then a lot of times um, the longer leaders are producing. So in the end, I just like to have a mix. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, if you're out and you see over and over and over, you see a pattern where the fish are on a certain length of leader that day, yeah. uh, maybe switch it up uh, the other ones, you know, and, and kind of match them. Um, but for the most part, I always just run a mix, and that, that seems to be the ticket. Uh, as far as that goes. Uh, other than that, on the rigging, make sure whatever you're doing, there's a lot of different ways to drag, man, but make sure that you're not having um, tangles every time you put your, your lines out. With the rig, I mean, you know, have it where it's not down there tied in a knot every time you reel it in. And that's Good. something I went through when yeah. I started dragging. I, I had no idea how to rig to uh, avoid tangles. Um, Good, that's where, simple, smooth yep, presentation. Yep, uh, you know, swivels, um, that's that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, having a good three-way swivel um, is normally what I recommend, and then a chain swivel makes a big difference yeah. um, as far as your leader twisting and everything. Absolutely. The more the more that you know the bait as it goes through the water is going to twist, and that's naturally going to want to tangle itself up. But uh, as he's talking, you know, keeping those swivels is going to let everything twist and free and and uh, be nice and smooth. Right. And same with um, you know. Speaking about the, the twisting and everything, how you cut your bait, it's a big, big deal when you're drifting. Um, yeah. Having a piece of bait that, you know, is not sitting there really twirling the whole time in a circle, or having something that, you know, just looks kind of natural, swims through the water almost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know you cut, you cut a lot of fillets. I yeah. mean, that's obviously an awesome choice for drift fishing anywhere. Um, that fillet is almost swimming through the water. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah, that's a great bait, but. Uh, Really, it comes down to you definitely don't want anything that's that's just sitting spinning the whole time, yep. making your rig get tangled up and it just doesn't look natural to the fish. It doesn't, doesn't. So there you have it, folks. That's uh, five tips. That's a little bit more than five tips. Yeah, I we, mean, <laughs> you guys got you guys got some good information on that one. But you know, uh, just make sure that you know, like you said, checking checking your leaders, smoothness, cuts of bait. You know, presentation, all that stuff, uh, you know, have that in check. And if you have any questions about any of that, you know, hit me up, hit Zach up, social media, um, Blues Brothers Guide Service on Facebook. Yes, sir. Zach Royce on Facebook. Uh, you can check us out, Slunder Cat Outdoors, Chris Souders. Anytime, anywhere you're at, send us a message. It may take us a little bit longer to get back to you than normal, but, you know, hey, we're fishing. We're busy sometimes, but... <laughs> It happens. That's right. Or, you know, like in this case, I've not had service for two days. It's been good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been, nice. It's been it? quiet, been <laughs> quiet. But, uh, hey, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, make sure and check us out. Make sure to check Zach Royce out, Blues Brothers Guide Service. Give him a shout. Give him a chance. Come out here on Lake Gaston. And, man, blue cats. This place is full, full of blue cats, as you can see. Take care. We'll catch you on the water.